Welcome back to another painting session. I'll be taking a small break from my planet paintings. Oh, my big, big series paintings based on plants and what have you. And I'm going to be doing some tutorial paintings as I have requested from many people and uh, very late of me to do another one. Yeah, I've been meaning to do this in the works, so might as well do it now. Today, I'll just be making one singular planet. Nothing more, nothing less. It will be a green one. I will show you how to handle the can, how to spray it, how to have your layering right, and how to make a good texture. I won't show you all the textures that is possible with newspaper but I'll show you the most common one, especially for me. And that is a sort of, if you've seen my videos, most of my paints have this texture where it's almost a, a cloudy texture, where, where it's like kind of scored in places. It's like slated, difficult to put into words. <clears throat> But I will start off with this, this spray painting or spray paints. This is just normal Rustoleum. Hunt Green Club Green Satin is the type of paint I will be using as the base coat. When I say base coat, I mean the bottom coat, the first one, and then I'll lay stuff on top of it. This is type of uh, like a groundwork. I'd always recommend, of course, I'm not an art professional, but I would recommend, especially with planets, that you have a darker, it doesn't have to be this dark at all, but a, a darker color, and lighter colors up top, unless you are purposely going for a, um, an inverted technique or what have you. Now, as you see, I had my stencil here, where it's just a piece of paper that I cut up. I'll probably make a video just making these one day. But you can see here these little blips. These are caused by high pressure. Now you could avoid this by, of course this is only a short term thing as it does have the detriment later on. Only you should get a few times so there will be more solvent in your paint, making it thinner and less high pressured. The more high pressured it is, the higher your chance of getting these little blobs here. As it is more paint being pushed out, higher pressure also means that the cap you're using is going to get clogged easier. And if the cap gets clogged, then this is going to get clogged. And that almost causes this to be unusable unless you know how to unplug it easily without destroying the can. Um, what next? Um, yeah, these paints, it's pretty simple. They're like seven bucks or I get them with tax. Uh, you could just get them at your Home Depot. That's where I get them. Uh, you get them at Lowe's um other like art stores like wherever that has spray paint you could get it there this restroom is very very common it's usually used for furniture but i use it for other stuff but do keep in mind always get the painter's touch variant with two times extra cover paint and primer look for this okay right here this is what you want especially the two times this practically adds you two times as more time you can use this before it goes dry. And it has a, a bit more versatility. It looks a tiny bit nicer. Um, it gets laid down better as it is paint and primer. It gets protected more. It speeds up the process of drying. Only about like a little bit. But yeah, it it's just better. As you can see here, this is double cover so 
up with the time you're going to be using this as double density, if you will. Um, yeah, I have a little seam here so I know where I will be painting. When it comes to holding the can, of course, hold it as you're comfortable. If you don't hold it right, then you're going to get very uncomfortable. If you want, you could always get an auto sprayer like this. What you do is you snap it on to the little rim here, like that. And you just pull the trigger, easy. But I don't like to use them. I'd rather just use my hands normally. Uh, this is how high I hold them. A firm grip on the top, pointer finger pointing down. If I am going to spray for a continuous amount of time, I move my hand up from this to this. So I have a bit more uh, comfortability for my pointer finger where I will be spraying all of it. Now you can see here that I am spritzing it. That's because spritzing this and not just laying it down like that all the time. Of course you still see me just lay it down. But spritzing it like this helps to alleviate the chance of your can having um, clog issues. It gives a bit more time to kind of go through and not get clogged up. Now you might be noticing as well, I'm only using one cap as to preserve my caps. I would always recommend you do this once you're done using your little caps as you can only get one per can. You can't, I, I've tried, uh, you can't get more exactly like these, the factory caps, only from the factory as the name suggests. Uh, just dip them in 100% acetone and you're golden, you're fine. They'll be able to be used for a, significant, or for a significantly longer time than if you didn't wash them, you didn't clean them. Same thing I use for my brushes. Acetone has a really good effect against uh, spray paint and paint in general. Okay, next thing. How to shake your cans. Now some types of cans require you to shake them for two minutes. You don't need that, especially with brush oleums. Depending on what type of density of paint you want, if you just want, now I already shake it a little bit, so I'm gonna just spray it down. See how bare, not a lot of paint is coming off. If I shake it a lot, and I also notice I'm having it upside down. There's one ball bearing in there, a little metal ball, that helps to mix up the solvent and the paint. You shake them over, and then you mix them together using that ball bearing. have a, a few various motions to shake the ball around. If the ball is not moving, then it's up here, kind of stuck with all the paint. What you do is you just tap it, hit it against something until it falls off. It won't take long. Okay. Now, now I have thoroughly shaked this thing. Now lay down this layer. You see, it's kind of a flat color. That's what I want. It will still move with uh, the newspaper. While it's wet, is very volatile. I'm not volatile. That's not the word. Um, versatile, as it could still move. If you still change its shape, it will not always be flat. It will merge with the top coats and wherever direction the newspaper wants it to go and wherever direction you want it to go. Now, we use the same techniques I taught you how to shake your can, but with moss green, a lighter green. This will be the beginning of our top coat, or middle coat rather. I usually have bottom and top coat, but here I'll have another for extra brightness. 
Having more coach doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be better. But if you want an added depth and color, then do that. It, not all planets need that. Not all planets should have that. Some of them is perfectly fine with them just being simple. Some pants look very nice and some don't in real life or in my paintings. So you don't have to make them extra complicated. More than they have to be, unless you want them to. Again, you're the painter. You get to decide. Now you might be noticing I'm doing this relatively quickly. It's because I'm just doing top over coat, over coat, over coat. That's what I'm doing. The real magic happens when I use this. So just wait for that point. During this time, take some time out of the video to go down below and like the video if you like it and comment what you like about this video so far. And if you like what I do, spray painting videos, then don't feel shy to subscribe to the channel as I post almost every day with to all of you with tutorial videos for main videos and shorts having the small little tidbits of the main videos. This will also, and this won't be a short I don't think, it might be. It'll just be like the paint of painting because I'm going relatively quick on this. Now I have the greens here and I'm going to go on top of it again with this, the oregano, which was the grayest green brown that you saw. Good. Now I'm going to get some gloss paint. So hold tight here. Alright. Now, as you can see, it's very flat. If I try to do anything with it now, it wouldn't do much at all. But, with the gloss coat here, uh, one layer here will moisten all of it and get it primed to texture. Primed for this. So when you do this, shake it as much as you want, it does not matter. This will probably go out very quickly. This might be the last hoorah for this can, very empty. You can tell by the hollowness from the ball, how much it shakes, and how quickly it does, as there's not anything stopping it, because there's not a lot of stuff in there. Okay, so I'm going to spray here, evenly, close. Now you see, it's a bit more glossy. I'm going to take this, normal newspaper. Uh, you'd rather have a bit of the thinner ones that aren't glossed. It just depends on what texture you want. So I want for this planet to move like this. So I'm going to have this new newspaper right here. So I'm going to take my hand. This is very important, so keep attention. Have your hand here, have light pressure down, curve it. You want movement with this thing. Keep going, faster, faster, faster. Go over one more time, lift it up, see how it looks. Okay, it's gonna need a bit more gloss after this. Have. Now that we have this, um, I'm not going to use this as I have paint on it still. It will go over these parts where I don't want paint. The gloss will be maintained for a very long time, so I'm not worried about that wearing off. got a new piece of newspaper. Lay down again at the same angle. I'm gonna go faster this time. A bit more aggressive. Lift it up to see the work and then go back down to change. All right, this is a bit better. 
more textured, more details. Okay, now that we have this, I'm going to get the shade. So bear with me here for a second. The shade for this plant will not be black, but rather dark walnuts. Whenever you have shading, don't always go to black. It's, it's usually too much. Use dark walnut instead, or a variant. This is just very dark brown. Because for this, it's a bit too aggressive. And depending on the color, keep with a similar color that will fit it a bit better. For green, it's brown. For blue, it's a very, very dark blue. What I use is midnight blue, which that's used for shade. Usually I don't use that because the cans themselves always seem to be very high pressured, but the one I have, I used it for the last video, works fine. If you're doing red, brown again, uh, dark brown is used very well because this is very close to black, but not quite. Now I'm going to hold this stencil above it again, get like a good estimate. I'm going to spray here. Don't shake it a lot, okay? I only shake it a few times and that's enough. Now, it's very important. You want it to stay in this section and not go out, okay? So, you spray ever so gently. Like that, go back, up, forward, up, backwards, up. Now spritz, okay? So you have a good, deep coat here. Now all you do is extend it a little bit by small spray, okay? Don't push it all the way down, but enough that it still sprays. And just extend shading there good now I'll move this up so you can see very closely as you can see you don't see any brown spots like I talked about when I laid down the green on the stencil any of those blobs, you don't see the blobs, but that's very good. You don't want the blobs. They move away from the immersion. The shading should be maintained here and here alone. Now, there's a little issue here. Um, I think it's just about, yeah. Um, just try to remove any and all blemishes from your painting. I can't always do that. Okay, I think that's it. I think I got rid of it. I'll, I'll cover that up later. But now, all we have to do is wait. Okay. For these things, when you're using a circle stencil, like this, you're going to have to wait, depending on the weather, about 20 minutes or so for the paint to dry. You can use gloss to make it look better when eventually you do have to put the sensor on, but it will take a stint, an extended amount of time. Um, I don't really care that much about that. I'll have just a gloss coat after. So I'll wait for that. Um, again, not with this little pause here. Now, I'll skip through the video, but I'll save my piece before that. If you would like to go down to the comment section, comment what you like, what you don't like. I like the video so far, if you do like it. And subscribe to the channel if you like what I do. I'll remind you a few times, so don't worry. <clears throat> I do plan to make some more of these type of tutorials. I'll probably make some more planet tutorials. Um, with different textures and what have you. Though there is another person, another spray paint artist, um, who does a lot of tutorials, almost um, mainly does tutorials, and uh, he's a British guy. His name is John Barber Arts. That's his um, 
YouTube channel. I might put it into the cards, I might not, because I think I trust y'all to not put to the name. It's John, G-O-N, Barber, as you would assume that Barber would be named. I do recommend that you see the guy. He's very good at uh, a spray painting, as he's been doing it much longer than I have. Um, though some of his techniques, to me, <clears throat> to me, are a bit unpolished. Not saying that I'm any better, of course, uh, I'm not. But they could still use some work. Just like I, I could always use some work. Everyone can. Um, but he does a lot of, especially the stuff, stuff like single planet tutorial type stuff. Uh, I'm trying to do that as I think I have like enough spin, enough type of texture to mine as I also use a different type of paint. He uses Montana paints. I use Restolium, my local brand. Montana is a European brand and well, he's in Europe, so of course he's gonna have a better availability to it. The closest storehouse in the States are, it's in uh, LA. And I, I think that's it. There, they have a bit more storehouses. And Montana Paint is also a bit more versatile in, in their brand itself. Uh, like Rustoleum. Rustoleum does like a home improvement type thing along with art. Uh, but you don't want really to use it a lot for art, now do you? Except for me and like a very select other people. Uh, Montana is expressly for art, for graffiti, wall murals, spray paintings. It's all for that. So I'm kind of using the, the weirder thing. I do have Montana colors, the sun spray paints. I have like 24 of them. I just don't use them because I don't like them. Um, I, I just think Rustolium is just better. Um, I think it can <clears throat> be more versatile, more detailed. Um, it gets sprayed down easier. I can control it much better. It's easier to clean. Um, they're more vibrant. There's more colors. And they're cheaper. They're just better overall, in my opinion, anyway. It might be different from y'all's. And y'all was in the complete right to have that opinion. It's just that I just like it a bit better. Um, what else to talk about before I put down the stencil? Oh, I, I, I'll say this. If you do want me to make a video about something that concerns spray painting, um, just, just tell me in the comments section. Because uh, I always get notifications. I love to read the comments. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and it's, it's nice. So I, I'll, the changes are very, very high. I will see your comments as I don't really get that much of them. Um, hopefully by the time of this video being made and maybe after it will start booming. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> but I'll most likely see that. So. Um, I would like to wait. I, I would like to like have more wait time and not just have a cut here. I, I, I think I could teach you a bit more, Sean. Um, I'll examine this a bit better. And I'll do it at the end. Now you see here that it's not just straight lines, right? It's because it's how you crumple the newspaper. I'll show you. Um, I'll move this to the side for the moment. take this normal newspaper right old old newspaper now depending of if you want to lay it down like this or like this because it's different thick at the different sizes this is longer uh, no this is longer than that the length right if you want to go lengthwise widthwise it will change so let's say I want to go lengthwise like this so that means I'm gonna have to fold it hot dog style if any of you remember how to do that it's this take it here and fold it in a long way once that is done have a soft crease don't do a hard crease do a soft crease or no crease at all just fold at the moment after that fold it again soft crease 
after that. Um, of course, you could just keep it like this to have bigger spaces. For me, I like to do it smaller, so I'm gonna do one more. There. Once you get this, this little stick, you just start greasing it like this, fold it over, use your nails to dig in slightly, like I'm doing it right here, like that. It makes a little crease here. Do that where you're moving forward. And have it like a rounded edge, like this. This is where you should get to. If you're doing the same texture as mine, of course. Once this is done, start crumpling. It doesn't matter how you do it, just get the job done. Okay, got that done. Fairly crumpled, and now I'm going to unfold it. You can see all the grooves here, and if it does this, that's a pretty good sign that you've done a good texture on it. There's a lot of lines, that's good. But the um, thing I use over there to add more uh, perpendicular creases. If you don't know what that is, it's just lines that go over lines. That's why you see here. Uh, what's a good example? Um, what is it? I mean, most of those are most of these are linear, but there's some where. Um, like over here, you'd see like they're slanted down like this, slanted forward. Um, man, there's not a lot of them, but sometimes there are. I just so I'm to be very linear with this. So this, this will produce a texture very similar to that. Now to get the texture, this is just the first part. The second part is how much pressure you apply and how much, how wet the paint is. The wetter the paint, more, the more susceptible it will be to move. If it's too wet, you're just gonna make smears. Unless you're going for a gas type that uh, type planet, don't do that. Only just one coat, and that's it. If you want more, um, like a gas giant type feel, do more. Just spray it longer, or have it another coat on top. Once that's done, you just take like a less textured one. So all you would have to do is just fold it again like I did and just do it like a few seconds and then that's it. This, I did it like a full minute. Or like 30 seconds. In between that time, I don't know, I didn't count. And then you just... Of course, all my examples, it's gonna have this direction. You have it down here, hold your hand like this so it lays flat, and then move it like that in one direction, that's it. You it here, then you use your right hand or left hand if you change it up to move it like that. You should feel with your left hand, like I am, the paint moving. That's a good sign. And as you move, you should be able to see the paint that you leave behind and if it is the right texture that you want. If not, you go over it again, but do keep in mind that the gloss only lasts for so long in that state. If you want it to maintain its wetness to shape its form better, you're gonna add more. If you go one round with it, you're going to dry it up as it's going to come with you and soak into the newspaper as it is primarily on the top. It's not gonna seep down immediately, okay? So I'm gonna put this away for the moment. I am hoping that I am um, explaining myself pretty good. Um, I'll explain like space. It won't be much, it'll just be like, I'll just use black. Um, black and a little bit of dark green. That's what I use for it. And uh, some stars, very distant ones. Uh, I'm going to I'm sorry, I'm trying to go for a peel that is a very isolated planet. Because in reality, if you're going to see a planet, uh, first of all, it's probably not gonna, it's probably not gonna look like this. It's not probably not gonna look green. Uh, then as that would imply either some variant of chemical um, or a photosynthesis behavior in that planet and a lot of it at that so you're more likely to see like anything else really except for like exotic colors like 
pink or purple, but even pink and purple, they're usually more common than this. Just like say like, and just like any other color, but you're, you're going to find them in a very isolated place. Space is very big and it's, there's not a lot of space for stuff. It, it's called space for a reason. There's a lot of space there. There's not a lot of cramped in spaces, not, not a lot of cramped in areas, right? So you're gonna find a planet, right? That's it, you find a planet, you find Earth, right? Um, just like you see in the night sky, there's not a lot of large objects except for the moon. And that's it. It's just darkness everywhere. Sad, depressing. And by that's, I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, what I will say, is a bit a strange a shane spray painting lore for you <clears throat> i don't like space i i hate it i i do not want to go to space ever ever i hate it way too open i don't like open spaces but i like to paint about it so which is uh i don't know what you'd say about it yeah, hypocritical i guess but eh, it's fine. I don't get scared about this. I get scared. I get scared on the real deal. The real deal is less, much less fantastical of what I paint. I'm also gonna see. Okay. Well, it looks like it's pretty much dry now. I guess all that talking about the Shane Law really dried it up. I'm gonna make a joke about that. Yeah. So, to check if it's dry or not, check the most, I don't know, uh, paint, less paint dense area, so like the edge, something you won't actually cover up, but there's still paint like over here. If nothing comes off, like there's no smears, you have your finger there, and there's no paint on your hands, keep going further still, don't add a lot of pressure, just move it like this. Keep doing that. When you're comfortable, go to the shade as that's going to be the most dense. And feel it there. Okay. And this seems pretty good. I'm going to line this up. Here. If you want, just move it like whatever direction you want to know, like where you're going. Okay. I'm going to keep it right there. That's good. Now for the weights. These are my painting weights. I got them at Metal Shop. If you're not so fortunate to have a uh, metal scrap bin to your ec uh, that has access, just go to like Home Depot or just like a junk bin, like a pile or what have you. Take some nuts and bolts. Get these. These are equally as fine. This just covers as much area. Uh, this covers more area than the nuts and bolts. So that's why I use these more. And do keep in mind, don't use a lot of weights. Just use it on the edges. Like I'm doing. And what I'm using is not... They're not heavy. Like, not even a pound. Like, I'd say a gram or two. Put it down, easy. You do, you do not want to add a lot of pressure. E like, even if it's as dry as this, if you add too much pressure, it's going to peel. Peeling, very bad. You do not want it. it basically tarnishes the entire painting. Don't, you don't like it. It's no good, no good. Sorry, I'm probably just getting some black paint over here. All right, now, oh, a little bit of disclaimer. When you're painting, always use a gas mask or a respirator. I'm not doing that because I gotta talk. Um, as a respirator isn't really good for talking. It's gonna be muffled, more muffled than I already talk like. So that's why I gotta use this 
you know, do this without a, a mask. I should be fine. I, I have open ventilation, so I'm all right. As long as I don't get too close and huff it in like a, a maniac, I'm perfectly fine. And you would probably be too. Just don't, don't huff the spray paint. Hey, it's that simple. Okay, now I'm going to spray around. Don't be too thick. Don't be too heavy. That is pretty bad. Just have the top coat like we would with the planet. Okay, so it's done like count in a few spots. It's a bit too light. Now I have a big ring light right behind that camera. So I have to like move my head a little bit because it, the light gets in ways in which it's very hard to see where, where Ashton needs help. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about something that might be a bit controversial. Um, I know a lot of people do spray paint on TikTok and Instagram, and this is relevant, trust me. For once they have the planet down, and the planet might look nice, it might not. This is just a nit nitpick. They always, this really ticks me off. But they make a paint score all the way there. Like that, I, I hate it. It's way too thick in paint. It's not realistic. It doesn't look like a galaxy. It doesn't look like a nebula. It's just a streak of paint. To be fair, uh, I'd rather have more realistic paintings, but still, it's it, it doesn't tick tick. For me, it does, but for other people, yeah, I understand. Like, it, it's just a color, it, it's fine. But it's just a little pet peeve of mine. So I might as well just have some more Shane spray painting lore for you. Okay, when you're doing this, don't spray a lot. Spray a little. That's pretty alright. I'm not gonna add a tint around paint it. I know some other, some other people do that. You do not have to do that. Do not have to do that. Because as you would have noticed, it's a lot brighter here than over there and that's perfectly fine. Keep it like that. Okay, I think this is good. I'm gonna take my plastic glove here, or latex glove. I always wear gloves when you do this part. It is a pain. It, it, it's a big pain to clean spray painting off, uh, spray paint off your uh, your hands, your skin. Awful, awful ordeal. So don't risk it. Just wear gloves. Come on. Not that difficult. They're not that expensive. If you want to do this long term, just buy like a box of them. Pretty simple. Um, for this, should I get green stars? I'm gonna keep with the green stars. Okay, now I have a piece of cardboard here that I use to spray on and to practice my spritzings. What that is, I'm not gonna do it over here, I don't wanna risk it. I uh, get like big blobs. I say that as because you're gonna have spray painting here. Spray, I keep saying spray painting when I say spray paint. You're gonna get spray paint in your hand here. I use my middle finger as that's the strongest finger to flick on. Uh, it doesn't matter what particular one is better, it's just which one is better at flicking. But my middle finger is. So I would spray it here, pretty close. Have a pre-flick, flick, a, flick, a, uh, flick a, few, a few more times. And you can see like how thin and how small the stars are. Or the little dots, I call them stars. So I'm going to do that right here. Spray it down. Once I feel ready, spray it down. Now you might notice you don't see my hand because see my hand here, I go all the way up. About that same level as my camera, but that won't really help you in terms of distance. It's like three or so feet above. That helps is because, uh, as because the speed it goes by kind of cuts the paint so that it becomes smaller. 
That's why I do that. I'd rather have smaller stars, more realistic, than bigger ones. Once the paint is pretty thin, you can get closer. In some areas, it's good for you to have a bit more density in stars, as it kind of shows that there's an over excess, like maybe a part of a galaxy there. In some areas, it's okay to have a void, and there are voids and excess in stars in space. So it's pretty good to reflect all of that. Okay, once that is good, I'm going to add a few comments. Let me just remove my glove real quick. Okay. Now, I have this, the Comet Maker. What it is, is it is just a piece of paper that I fold, I make a crease half or so away, and have this little loop to catch the paint I spray here, and then it goes all the way down into the channel and makes the texture that is desired. I'll prove it to you that it looks good right here. Get close, get them, and spray. There. Spray again. Good. And check the catch here. You see there's painting dripping down, so you get tissue, or I like, and spray up. See? Spray up. Don't spray down, it'll just increase the speed. Spray up. Okay. So, I am going to make a few more. This, I'm going to replicate the angle. One there. Uh, there and I'm gonna do ah, that's fine I just have four okay and one more swipe up just to ensure the lifespan of that one you want the channel to be clean so the tip is sharp by the comments that is once you have the space all done you take the weights off careful don't do too hard as there's paint still on them you'll probably get them on your hands right there check around if you need to do of course do this after you mess around with the weight and get them off you see if there's any spots that need more paint that need more stars what have you get all that done once that's all taken and cover you take a bit of tape here which without the tape it's just a piece of paper, a circle piece of paper, you take a piece of uh, tape, fold it, and have the little flaps. The flaps attach to the paper. This little flap helps you to lift. Now hold it like this. I add some pressure to the side here. I lift over. It voila. Bien. It's good. I like it. See? Not that hard. Before I laid down, or before I put down the stencil, it was just a texture on a piece of paper. But after some time and care, it looks like a planet in a vast sea of space. Now I'm just going to, now you don't have to put a gloss cover on it. It's wholly optional. You don't have to do it. It's just an aesthetic choice. It's going to be protected no matter what, unless you like poke it, like stab the paper or not. And with that, it's going. It doesn't matter. It's going to go through the paper nonetheless. But that's like extreme. Like if you like, once it's dried, if you really rub on it, it's going to mess up any painting. If you really rub on it, so just handle it with care, like you would anything else. It's perfectly fine. With this, I'm good. Um, with the planet having a satin color and the space being a bit more glossy but it will be satin in time so yeah I like it um, but do I'm not gonna have a gloss coat over it uh, only over there when I have my signature but do keep in mind when you do have the gloss cover don't have too much never have too much 
as that means it's going to have bubbles, crackles, and blending. That's not good. You need to be patient with it. When you have low spritz, be careful, okay? But I'm not gonna do that. Not because I'm not gonna risk it, I just think this looks better. But I will have my signature over there. I need the paint to be a bit wetter. Stick it here. I like a sharp object. Mine is a little souvenir knife. There. All good. And that's it. That's off she wrote. I think it's pretty good. Pretty nice seam. Yeah, good seam, very clean. Um, the space is good. Good green and black. The stars are good. Comments are right. Texture, good. And you could make something just like this. And if you do, uh, do make sure to at me or tell me that you have, as I'll be very interested in see all of to, in seeing all of y'all's crea uh, creations, um, and especially knowing that me of all people have encouraged you to make something of your own. But that will wrap today's tutorial. If you have enjoyed the tutorial, do make sure to again subscribe to the channel. And if you like what I do, spray paint videos. If you like this video, like the video. If you don't like the video, of course, just like the video. But I would like to know in the comments section below if there's any criticisms of the video itself in the painting, um, anything else. Um, of course, compliments are equally as accepted as both comments, um, compliments and criticisms both help me to become a better painter and video maker for these paintings but with that out of the way this 47 or so minute long video yeah i think it's fun yeah i hope that all of you have enjoyed today's painting session and today and today's tutorial i hope that you've learned something from today and if you have i've done my job and with that out of the way i hope that all of you have a brilliant day bye bye